Hello, everyone. I'm Jose Stevens. Uh, welcome to the conference, the SSP conference on shamanic tools and practices for transitioning times. Uh, we have a lot of good presentations coming up. They all about useful practices that you can put into use for the uh, to help you in the coming times. We're, as you know, we're in this enormous times of change, and it's really helpful to have little uh, tools that you can pull out of your shamanic toolbox and, and use uh, to uh, help you adjust or adapt to whatever the latest changes are. I'm going to begin the presentations with uh, some Toltec practices. I think I will just do two of them, maybe three. Um, one of them is very simple and the other one's a little bit more complex. Uh, but they're very, very helpful, very useful. I found them personally very, very constructive. And so I want to share these with you and hopefully you'll, you'll make good use of them. Uh, a little bit on the Toltecs. Uh, the Toltecs were uh, officially uh, uh, considered by anthropologists to be a tribe of people that lived in uh, central Mexico in around the 11th and 12th century. But uh, the Toltecs in our case here do, doesn't refer to those people specifically. It refers to a gen, many, many generations of people who lived in central Mexico and um, Guatemala area. Uh, it in, actually included the, the Mayan cultures, uh, the Mayans and the Toltecs uh, shared calendar systems and many of the same beliefs. So it was this whole section uh, of Mexico and uh, Belize and uh, over in the Yucatan area and the Guatemala area. Um, and uh, going back uh, many, many generations, in fact, the Toltecs themselves talk about generations that came before they even lived there. Uh, where, where that was, we don't know. It, some of them suggest that it was Atlantis. We, don't, we just don't know. Uh, but let's just say that the Toltecs refers to a very, very long tradition of uh, spiritual knowledge collected by people who uh, were interested in the stars and interested in understanding the, the cosmos and the human interaction and relationship to the cosmos. Uh, the Toltecs to, of today refer to uh, anyone who practices uh, these, these exercises and carries the Toltec philosophy, uh, no matter where they live in the world, they could be in Italy, they could be in the United Kingdom, they could be anywhere, and they would be considered Toltecs. Not because of the color of their skin or the, what they look like, but uh, because they practice uh, the philosophy and um, uh, the spiritual exercises. So uh, we're gonna work with, uh, like I said, two, two exercises. And the first one is oriented toward uh, eliminating, it's called the pleasure exercise. That's a little bit of a misnomer because uh, it sounds like it gives you pleasure, but, and it kind of indirectly does because you're clearing yourself of some um, problem areas. So uh, this is about clearing addictions. It's about clearing uh, obsessions and uh, things, uh, patterns that are not really beneficial to you. And uh, it refers to anything that, that could be sub very specific types of addictions like gambling or uh, sex addictions, addictions or addiction to alcohol, various drugs. Um, but it can also refer to addiction to suffering or addictions to certain uh, thought patterns, ways of thinking that are not constructive, like maybe you're um, addicted to worry, or maybe you're addicted to uh, uh, negative thinking, uh, or being um, cynical, or thinking that everything's not going to work out. So 
there are many, many forms of addictions. And this covers all that territory. So um, uh, the practice uh, requires that you uh, choose or select an addiction that you have. And remember, it doesn't have to be a conventional addiction like alcohol, um, but it could be. Uh, and think of one that gives you trouble or has given you trouble over the years. One that you maybe haven't been able to clear um, and has frustrated you because of that. So I'm going to give you a moment just to peruse and contemplate what that might be. And now, if you will, you don't have to do this, but it would help if you came up with three other areas of addiction that you have, three other addictions. Some of you may be fortunate enough to say, hey, I don't have that many. Fine, that's okay. But most of us, if we really look, we'll find that we're addicted in a number of areas. So that would make four, one main one and three backup ones. Okay, a little bit more here about addictions. You know, addictions aren't always pleasurable. Like you could say, well, I'm addicted to ice cream. And of course, we think of somebody that just can't stop eating ice cream because it's so, uh, it tastes so good. Sometimes we're addicted to like the addiction to suffering, which by the way, is one of the Toltec's uh, nine underworlds. Uh, they consider that to be a very significant addiction that many, many people um, struggle with over the centuries, in fact. Now, you know, suffering is not something that we usually enjoy. It's not like ice cream. But it's interesting that we can get addicted to things that don't feel good. Like, it doesn't feel good to worry, but we can get addicted to something like worry, where we just keep coming over, back to it, back to it, and we can't leave it alone, we can't stop it, it's like obsessive. So, even though this is called the pleasure process, uh, it doesn't necessarily involve pleasure. It involves, uh, it does involve addiction. Okay, so you can do this sitting down. I prefer to stand up. It's a little easier to do, I think, standing up. So I'm gonna stand up here. And uh, I am, the, the Toltec's considered to the, the hips the, uh, this whole pelvis area to be the area of addictions, all addictions, whether they have anything to do with your sexuality or not, um, gambling addiction or these other things that we've been talking about. So this would be the terrain right here. And so uh, the hands are placed in a kind of cup. You can interlace your fingers or just place one hand over the other, whatever you wish and your thumbs can just be crossed like this, and you're making a cup with your, with your hands. And your, the cup is just below your genital region, like so. And now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna call in uh, the energy that goes into that addiction. In other words, if you have, let's say, an addiction to um, overeating, well, all the energy involved in shopping, all the energy involved in cooking up the food, all the energy involved in consuming the food, in other words, the, the whole thing, not just the simple you know, connection with food, but the whole, the amount of energy that is used and lost in the process of that addiction. And for some addictions, like for example, drugs, the process of obtaining the drugs 
uh, bringing them home, uh, being secretive about them, hiding them from other people, all those kinds of peripheral activities are using energy that you wouldn't use if you didn't have that addiction. So uh, we're calling in all the energy that is expended on that particular addiction. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna call it in using a rattle. And I'm gonna use the Toltec word Chihuahua, which means come, come. So we're calling upon that energy. We're calling it forth, forward. Remember the energy itself is neutral. It's just energy, but it's being used by the addiction for something that's not good for us. So we want to work with that energy. So I'm going to call it in. Chihuahua. 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 So we've called that energy in, and now we place our hands in the form of a cup here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, now that we've called forth that energy, we're going to begin to fill the cup. Of course, this is something that you visualize. You visualize filling the cup with the energy that you expend on that particular addiction. So you hold that in mind. And meanwhile, you're busy draining this whole pelvic area of the energy that has been contained there, stored there for specific purpose of having this addiction. And we're gonna spill it into the cup so we're, you can visualize that any way you want to. You can visualize it as a particular color, a particular texture, a fluid, of, you, you know, it's, what, it's up to you. It doesn't matter as long as you, you know, do the general process. So we're thinking of the addiction and we're be, beginning to release and let go of the energy involved in it. All the years months, weeks, days, even decades. And slowly the cup fills. And the cup fills to a certain point where we can't really put any more into it. And then we take this cup and we lift it up to our navel. Now the navel is the place of our highest possibility. So we're gonna tip the cup and we're gonna pour the energy expended on this addiction into our navel so that that energy can now feed our highest possibility, our relationship with Pachamama, our support teams, anything that supports us or helps us or assists us, abundance and prosperity, all contained in the navel area. And we're feeding it. It's like we're watering a plant. We're robbing Peter to pay Paul here. So we tip some in there. And then we save some because we're gonna go higher with this. And we lift up the cup to our chest, the heart region, and we're gonna tip the cup once again and pour more of this energy into our best relationships, our love for other people, their love for us, our love for whatever we have that we love, places that we like to go, situations we like to be in, friendships, lovers, family. 
relationships with pets, relationship with spirit, you name it. We're feeding that, pouring some of this energy in there. So we can have good relationships and be well supported and have our hearts open, strong. Now we tip the cup back again and we lift up what remains in the cup and we're gonna pour it into our throat. The throat is the area of strength and power. So we're going to feed our strength and power by tipping the cup even more. Our relationship with clarity, the truth, speaking our mind, speaking with courage, feeling that elixir going into the throat and feeding what we want and not what we don't want. Now you could stop here or you could lift it up even higher to the brow, third eye chakra, and tip more in there to feed the higher mind, the ability to have psychic vision, to experience the higher planes, the higher octaves, the upper room, to experience ecstasy or joy. And if you wanted to, you could bring it all the way up to the crown chakra and pour the last little bit into the crown where it feeds our connection with spirit and it feeds our connection with the the sixth sun in the sky, which gives us our guidance and provides us with uh, a purpose and, and direction. And now we bring our hands slowly down, still forming the cup, and place it just below our genitals again. And this time, you can work on the same addiction if you want to if that addiction is particularly strong and you feel you need to go have another go at it that there's still energy there or you can take one of those backup addictions and work on that so it's up to you i often work with the same one all the way through because might as well get it completely done but this is completely up to you so now we begin to with an act of will, we begin to release the energy into the cup. And as we do so, we're, we're letting our bodies move in a kind of slow dance, kind of just movements, random movements of the body that allow this energy to be pulled from all parts of the body. It could be being pulled from the brain or pulled from the shoulders or the elbows or the hands or the chest or the back or the feet or the knees. And we're gathering it and we're pulling it up or down into this genital region, concentrating it there so that it can be poured into the cup. The cup fills to the brim and we take this cup and once again we feed the navel our abundance our prosperity our highest possibility for this lifetime and then we bring it up again to the heart and pour it into our blossoming our potential for blossoming in this lifetime our connections with other people, our connections with plants and animals and minerals and Pachamama, Mother Earth, our connections with all the things that we love. And we pour that in there and let it move our body still because some of it's going to go to different parts of our bodies to facilitate what our heart wants and needs. We bring up the cup again and we spill some into our throats. 
beating our strength and power, beating our relationship with the truth, our courage and speaking our minds, what we believe, up to the brow chakra, our joy, our third eye, our connection, and then up to the crown, our connection with spirit, connection with the sun, our higher wisdom, our higher self, coming all the way down. And once again, you have a choice of working with the same addiction or one of the backup ones. And once again, our bodies begin to move to attract and pull up, or in some cases downward, toward our pelvis region. All the energy that has been involved in keeping this addiction going. All the lack of willpower, the lack of discipline, and the beating of ourselves. Sometimes we beat ourselves up for having an addiction, for feeling like we can't overcome it. And all that energy that's expended goes into our cup. Pulling it up from the back area, the lungs, the liver, <clears throat> the thyroid, thymus, adrenals, kidneys, pancreas, gallbladder, spleen. Brain stem, brain. The knees and the ankles and the feet. <clears throat> Filling the cup, we bring the cup up once again. Pouring the cup into the navel. <clears throat> Feeding, watering our <clears throat> highest possibility. Feeding our abundance, our prosperity, our support system up into the heart region where we fill our blossoming in this lifetime, filling all of our relationships, our love life, our ability to unconditionally love ourselves and others. Lifting up to the throat where we pour into our strength and power, our relationship with the truth. The use of our voice and language to praise and lift others up and inspire. And speak words of kindness, loving kindness to others. Raising up to the brow again. <clears throat> Filling the third eye and the connection with spirit. <clears throat> the ability to see psychically. Joy, ecstasy, higher states, the upper room. Up to the crown, beating our connection with spirit. Our connection with the eagle that flies from our crown to the sun, bringing messages back and forth. Bringing this cup down once more. This is the lap, the fourth and final time. There will be bringing the energy into the cup from the addiction that we've chosen to focus on. Pouring it into the cup, getting it from all parts of the body, moving the body, when the cup is full, raising it up once again, 
pouring into the navel, the relationship with Pachamama, strengthening that relationship, watering that relationship, making that plant grow, filling us up with abundance, filling us up with support, prosperity, infinite supply, our highest possibility in this lifetime, achieving our life task work beyond our wildest expectations, feeding that, lifting up to the heart, feeling our, feeding our blossoming, watering our relationships, watering love, making love grow, unconditional love for ourselves, others, spirit, our environment, raising up to the throat, pouring some of this energy into our strength and power, our courage, our relationship with, with the truth, speaking the truth, speaking clearly, making ourselves heard, raising up to the third eye, pouring some there, our ability to see psychically, our ability to perceive with clarity, see with the eyes of the Christ, see with the eyes of the Buddha, and up to the crown, releasing the last of the energy into the crown for communication with our highest self, with spirit, with the central sun, bringing our hands down, and experiencing the, the changes, the, the shifts of energy as we've rearranged ourselves, reinvented ourselves, so that we've taken some resources that we've been perhaps using, been using unwisely, and place them in more auspicious places so that we can grow those things that we want to grow and shrink those things that we want to shrink. And you can release your hands and give yourself a little bit of a move around just to make sure everything's in place and good. And I'm just going to say a couple more words about uh, this, this process. Uh, you may get dramatic results after doing this just once. On the other hand, it may be something that you need to do repeatedly. It's, it's a good idea, if you have a pretty strong addiction, to do this process focusing on that particular uh, addiction for seven days a week. Now, this didn't take us very long, 15, 20 minutes. Um, it's a very small investment of your time for very big results. Not only have I had reports to me that how successful this exercise actually has been to people, but I personally experienced great results from it. So I can attest to the, that it's a well, well worth the investment of time. And we're not going into easy times. It, it, we're in the thick of the rapids here. We're in the thick of the maelstrom, the center of the cyclone, as it said. And uh, this is gonna persist for some time. Massive changes and transformations on the planet in our ways of life. And, and, and it's, the stress levels are gonna be high. And stress, often brings out our addictions. And so we'll have ample opportunity to face our addictions and see what we can do with them. This is an excellent practice to do just that. So I wanna really encourage you to uh, give it a try and see what it does for you. I'm just gonna take a look at the time here. Are we doing it just right? Very good. So now we're gonna embark on a second Toltec practice. Um, the Toltecs, again, were very, very advanced in their understanding of the energy body. 
and the understanding of working with the sun and the moon and the stars and working with uh, Mother Earth. And uh, they had perfected many, many techniques. This is a wonderful process, a little bit more involved, a little bit more complex than the one we just did. And this one uh, has to do with working with the creative forces and destructive forces. Now, according to the Toltecs and actually many other traditions, um, the right side of the body is the masculine side and the left hand side of the body is the feminine side. The right hand side is the side of destructiveness, Kali, um, Shiva, Parvati, and the left side of the body is the side of creation, Brahma and the, the forces of, of creation, of making new things. Now, we tend to think of destructive as bad and constructive as good, but they both have two sides to them. Destruction can be violent and it can be a creation of great suffering. Uh, we hate to see beautiful things destroyed. Uh, but that's the process of change. So when we think in terms of purification, purification is a destructive process. We're cleaning out the toxins in our bodies. We're destroying viruses. We're destroying bacteria. That's a good thing. That keeps us healthy and strong. We need the destruction of certain cells in our body so they can be replaced with new fresh cells. That's, that's nature. Uh, it's landslides, it's uh, tsunamis, it's uh, volcanoes going off. It's, it's the process of change. And nature does not regard any of that as bad. We, we humans do because sometimes it affects us in our lives. But for nature, it's just change. So that's a good way to hold the destructive process. Think of the right hand as being the one that for many people holds the sword. The sword that cleaves the, the lies and the, the, the things that are uh, not appropriate and not helpful in our lives. To cut them off, get rid of them, get rid of the gangrene, cut it off. So that's the right side. And the left side, we think of constructive, creative as being good. But constructive, uh, creative processes can get out of hand. That's the process we see in cancer with the uh, unrestrained gr uh, growth of cells that um, is a problem for us. So sometimes we can overgrow things. A tree, a tree branches might get too big and start to hit the house and break the window in the house and you get the idea. So growth is not necessarily always good. Growth sometimes has to be trimmed and um, limited. But in general, we want to grow in our own lives. We want to grow toward wisdom. We want to grow toward kindness. We want to grow toward those things that we aspire to. And so we, you know, being creative in those ways is a very good thing. So this process that we're going to do calls upon the destructive forces of the universe and the constructive forces of the universe to help us in very specific ways and to help us to grow in our own ability to cooperate with nature and uh, uh, destroy what we need to destroy and create what we need to create. Um, so this involves some counting. I'm gonna bring my rattle forward here because we're gonna use the rattle too. Um, Toltecs used a lot of mathematics and they used uh, numerical counting uh, of breaths. So that's the way we're going to begin. First, we're going to take a deep breath and on the out breath, let go of any heavy energies that you might be carrying in your body. Just let them go down into the earth where they can be recycled right away by Pachamama. 
Take another deep breath. And on the out breath, align yourself with the measure and rhythm of the universe. The great cosmic rotation and orbits of planets and moons and suns and galaxies and solar systems and it's a giant clockwork and it's all happening exactly as it's supposed to. And take another deep breath and align yourself with the local conditions. Is it morning? Is it midday? It's midday right now. Is it dawn? Is it the middle of the night? What phase is the moon in? Just align with those local conditions. So I'm going to ask you to breathe in through your nose nine times and out through your mouth nine times in a fairly quick cadence like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you cut to nine while you're breathing in through your nose. Count to nine as you're breathing out through your mouth. Don't worry about the number. We're going to do it nine times, but I'll keep track of that. So I'll just say breathe in, breathe out. And you count to nine as you're doing each of one of those. Okay, here we go. Breathe in. Breathe out. 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 And now we're going to begin with the constructive side. This may seem counterintuitive, but we always begin with the constructive side, the left side, the feminine side. And we're going to make the constructive sides uh, aspects of the universe, we're going to make them an offering. And so we're going to take our hand and blow four offerings to the constructive aspects of the universe. I give you my good dreams. I give you my good thoughts. I give you my good feelings. I give you my good actions. And now we call in the constructive forces of the universe. And you can think of them any way you want to. Uh, you can think of the Hindu uh, God, the Brahma aspect of God, which is the creative aspect or whatever other ways you wish. And you introduce yourself to this creative aspect of the universe and you say, I am, and you give your name, in my case, I am Jose Stevens. I am strength and power. I am a spring. I radiate. That's the traditional introduction. And you can visualize any way you want to the creative aspects of the universe approaching you, coming to you. And you greet it with respect and you ask to exchange energies with it because we're, we're part of the universe. So we have those aspects within ourselves. So this is like meeting yourself, but in cosmic fashion. Now think of 15 up to 20 things that you would like help with that you would like to straighten up, um, you'd like to improve in your life. 
uh, that you would like to create, help to create. Now, it could be that you'd like to create um, a healthier body or a healthier mind, um, a positive point of view. Maybe you have physical conditions that you would like to heal. You'd like to see your body blossom into perfect shape. Maybe you would like to take the metaphor of blossoming in your life and further that. So you'd like to feed blossoming through the creative forces of the universe or feeding the realization of your highest probabilities and possibilities in this lifetime. Maybe you would like to feed and create good relationships, positive, loving relationships. Maybe you would like to uh, support projects that uh, you're involved in. Maybe you would like to help create um, a more abundance and wealth, more resources in your life. Anyway, you get the idea. So just to yourself, list a minimum of 15. You can use your fingers to count. They can include larger than life conditions. For example, you can, you can ask for help to create positive conditions in the world, like uh, um, solutions to climate change, um, harmony among human beings from different countries or in places in the world where there's violence and conflict. Uh, for the constructive completion of COVID or other disease processes that plague people in the world. So they don't have to be just personal to you. They can be, it can be kind of a, a more generous aspect of asking for help for the larger picture. Okay, so now it's best to stand for this part of the process because you can move your body a little bit more. And you're gonna take four of those things that you wanted help with. You wanted the creative forces of the universe to build upon and support you in. Take four of those things and concentrating on each one of those four, one at a time, Begin to move your body just like we did in the last process and get in touch with all that is needed, the support of your entire body in releasing the barriers to bringing in the creative forces that will help to build this condition into your life in a good way healing, abundance, clarity, and so on. It's very important that you breathe in and breathe out noticeably. Usually breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth. Now, you can take as long as you want with this process, but we're going to move to the next step in it, which is that you lift your left hand up, point your fingers to the sky, and you begin to receive 
the creative forces of the universe, symbolized by, say, Brahma or Mother Nature or whatever image you want to use, coming down through your fingers, in through your arm, past your elbow, into your torso, spreading throughout your body, filling up the whole left side of your body, filling up your whole energy field all around on your left side, forearm lengths, forearms lengths, that's quite a ways out there, to the left, forearm lengths above you, forearm lengths below, forearm lengths behind you, forearm lengths in front of you. And it's okay if it spills out into the right side. It's going to do that eventually anyway because it, it goes everywhere. And you're receiving the creative powers of the universe. And they're reinforcing the ones that are already within you, but they're making it stronger, stronger and more powerful so that you'll be able to create many, many wonderful things in your life for both yourself and for others. You'll be noticeably more creative, noticeably more constructive, able to get projects off the ground, able to make things happen. Filling you up all the energy that was involved in those other desires that you had asked for, they'll get helped too. But you're actually storing all this energy. You're storing it for a later time when you'll need it. Very similar to the practice of Qigong, where you store energy so that you can use it on another day. Okay, and you bring your hands together and you say, thank you for receiving my offerings. And you say, Ome Te Oro. And now we move to the right side and the right side remember is the uh, destructive side, the side of purification, the side of releasing, the side of letting go. And we're going to ask for help here in releasing that which needs to go. And so we begin with another deep breath letting the heavy energies to go. Second breath, rhythm and measure of the universe. Another breath, the current conditions of the moon and the sun and the earth. And we'll go right into our breathing. <clears throat> breathe in, breathe out. 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 Very good. Now we'll give our four offerings to the destructive side. I give you my good dreams. I give you my good thoughts. I give you my good feelings. I give you my good actions. 
Now we call in the destructive side. Huawei, Huawei. Huawei, Huawei. Call in Kali. Call in Shiva. Parvati. Durga. Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. Give your name. I am. I am strength and power. I am a spring. I radiate. And now you give another 15 offerings. These are things that you're offering, things that you would like to release and let go of. Maybe there are addictions, maybe there are various difficulties in your life, maybe there's not enough resources, maybe there's not enough money, maybe you're lonely, maybe you've had trouble finding employment, maybe there's so many things. Health issues, it should be easy to find at least 15 if, and you can go up to 20. And they can be larger issues, clearing out COVID, clearing out conflict in the world, clearing out political problems, polarization. And now take four of those things to work with four ones that you think, think are have priorities that you would really like to help with releasing and letting go of, destroying. So thank you, destructive forces, for receiving my offerings for accepting my offerings. And now, just like before, we begin to move our bodies in a way of releasing however, wherever these four things are being held in your body, one at a time. Sometimes they're being held in the spinal column, in the cervical vertebrae, or the thoracic vertebrae, or the lumbar vertebrae, or Cossix area, sometimes in the shoulders or in the neck or in the head area, releasing, releasing, letting go, breathing deeply, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Releasing from your ankles, all the stuck energy, the, the paths you've taken that didn't prosper, releasing the inflexibility in your knees, the addictions in your pelvis area, the difficult relationships in your right chest, right breast, the sickness and illness and held in the liver, blocks to miracles that are held in the shoulders and in the upper arms and the hands. Releasing, releasing, letting go. Raising the right hand up and beginning to receive the destructive forces of the universe, reinforcing the destructive forces that you have within you, but using them in a good way, in a productive way, in a way that purifies you and refines you. <sighs> Bringing it in through your fingers, your hand, your arm, your shoulder, 
filling up the right side of your body, strengthening this capacity to destroy, filling up the whole energy field, forearm lengths to the right of your body, forearm lengths in front of you, forearm lengths behind you, forearm lengths above you, forearm lengths below you, making a complete sphere with the destructive elements that you're bringing in now and the constructive elements that you brought in before, raising your other arm up so that now you have the constructive side and the destructive side working together for the same purposes to move you ahead, to move you to get accomplished what you'd like to accomplish, to let go of and refine and destroy and bring in new, fresh, creative, using them together, receiving the tremendous support and help from the universe. The forces of Brahma, the forces of Shiva, the forces of Sarasvati, the forces of Parvati, Kali, And you can take as long as you like working with the two. Then eventually when you come to a close, you bring your hands together. And you say, Ome Teo. And with that, you complete the process. Okay. So those are, we did two, we had time to do two complete processes. I hope that you will actually practice them and at least give them enough time to find out uh, what kind of results they're producing for you. And um, uh, I, I hope that you'll find that it's an enormous help in, in your life. Uh, if you want something in your life, you, you always have to pay for it. Uh, in, in this case, the payment is um, your, the, your time and a little bit of uh, extra effort. You know, do the processes, reap the rewards. If, if you just think about it, but you don't actually do it, you're, you're not going to get results. So uh, it's, it's actually worth the price of admission because it's a very inexpensive investment of your time and your energy. And I, I guarantee you that you'll find, that, you know, depending on what your needs are, these processes are a little different. They address different aspects, but whatever you need, uh, you'll get enormous help with just doing these couple processes. So um, uh, I wish you very good fortune and um, uh, we're gonna complete here.